guys, this is the ASMR Nerd, and today I'm going to be doing something a bit different than my usual. I'm going to be editing a handful of my trip photos using Adobe Lightroom. CC, which is um, a piece of software that's designed for um, editing and, and tweaking photos. It's not like heavy duty photo manipulation um, or um, you know artwork like like Photoshop or anything like that. It's it's primarily designed for making small edits to uh, digital photos, and for that it works really well. I mean, you can make big changes too, but it's not about, you know, merging things or, or making new um, stuff. It's about editing existing photos. Um, so, it's available as part of Adobe's um, digital photography subscription thing, I guess. You pay about $10 a month, and you get access to both Lightroom and Photoshop um, CC, the latest version, so um, I just thought this would be maybe something a bit different that you guys might enjoy, um, because one of my favorite things to do uh, when I want to relax is to edit some of my photos from trips I've been on while listening to ASMR videos. I just find it really chill and enjoyable. So uh, I thought you might uh, enjoy a video where I'm doing um, the editing. Anyway, you can let me know down in the comments as usual. I'd be curious to see or to hear. Um, but this isn't going to be really a tutorial per se. I'm not a professional photographer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and Lightroom is a fairly powerful piece of software, which uh, I've really only scratched the surface of. You know, I use some of its more basic features, and I think the results are great. Uh, but there's a whole lot going on that I, that I could talk about. But we're just going to stick to the basics today. Uh, so what you see here is the main develop module of Lightroom, and I've actually got it set so that uh, a lot of the panels are just popping out right now. You can also set them to, uh, to stay, but um, I like having the screen space, you know, I like my photo that I'm working on to take up as much of the screen as possible. Um, so I like to just leave them popping out. I keep this one over here because it has really the majority of the tools that I'll be using. So, um, And as you can see, I've got a small selection of photographs here that I've taken over the last oh, two years or so, year and a half, I guess. Um, and I've got photos from that I've traveled to, and as I edit them, uh, I'll talk a little bit about those places as well as, as what I'm doing in Lightroom. So this first photograph is uh, a picture of a, an ancient Greek temple, and this was taken in Italy uh, at a site called uh, Paestum which is um, a few hours south of Naples. I can't remember exactly how far the drive was, but um, I went to Italy. I traveled in Italy um, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I stayed in uh, Salerno, which is a little way south of Naples. And then from there, we drove south to Paestum. It's on the, uh, the west.
west coast of the country. Um, and it was um, a Greek site, um, which eventually became a Roman site, but a lot of the original Greek structures were preserved, including this temple, which I believe was a... Oh, you know, I'm not actually sure now. No, I'm not sure who this temple was dedicated to. I'd have to look it up, but anyway, um, I like this image. Uh, I think it's really neat because you can see this guy down here. <laughs> this is my brother, my younger brother. He was on the trip. And uh, it really helps give you a sense of the scale of this structure. massive ancient Greek temple with all these, you know, sort of crumbling stone and the, the plants growing out of it and all that. Um, and so um, I took this photo uh, at sunset, which is why it's got this sort of orangey glow to it. Um, but I shoot my photos in raw format, which basically means um, they're not processed in the camera. So normally when you take a photo, like a JPEG photo with your, um, you know, your phone or a digital camera that's not shooting in RAW, the camera does a whole bunch of in-camera processing to make that photo look nice and close to what it does in real life. Um, it uh, enhances the colors a bit. Uh, it um, sharpens it a bit, it does some noise removal, and it's a whole handful of things that it does, and you don't really have much control over how it does those things. You know, it sets a white point, all kinds of things. But, uh, you know, digital photographers amongst you will know that shooting in RAW allows you to have control over that uh, after the fact in post, like we have here. And so the original image, the raw image that comes out of the camera, tends to look pretty flat and kind of bland. Um, and that's because it hasn't had any of those tweaks or enhancements um, that actually ultimately usually end up making them look closer to what they look like to the eye. And so um, the colors are a bit washed out here. Some sharpening uh, and all that kind of thing. So, why don't we poke around through some of the features over here and I'll talk a bit about them as we go. So, in the basic controls here, we've got first of all color temperature, uh, which is a very useful feature when I'm looking at. Uh, photographs like this because um, in my memory at least uh, it was a richer, warmer um, lighting at this time of day because again the sun was very low. It was illuminating the stone, making it look very reddish. So we can just take our color temperature slider and we can bump it up a bit or we can bring it down. You can see it. It moves from sort of at sunset. Um, there are, of course, there's an exposure slider, you know, I can jack it way up or bring it way down. Um, where it is, by default, I think that exposure is actually pretty close or pretty true to life. Um, it's maybe a little bit underexposed because if you look at our, our histogram here, you'll notice that our there's not very much bright going on in this image and it was later in the day you know there's no whites in this picture um, except for I guess my brother's shirt but it was later in the day it was a little bit uh, starting to get a little dark so uh, I think where it is is pretty good um, now highlights 
with shadows, whites, blacks, these all change certain uh, portions of the image. And we'll get to those probably in a different photo for now. Uh, I think we're going to leave them because I think um, none of those really need adjustment here. One thing I might do, actually, is I might go up here. This allows me to crop the photo. Um, I like the framing down here with the fence and my brother um, in the bottom corner. This portion of the image is sort of wasted in a sense because uh, the sky is not adding anything. If anything, it's actually detracting a little bit, in my opinion, because um, you sort of sacrifice a bit of the sense of, of the scale of the temple by having all that empty sky above it. And so uh, I think I'm going to crop it in a little bit like this. We lose a bit off the right hand side here, but that's not that interesting anyway. And I think we get a sort of, well, let's find out. I hate this. I think it makes the temple feel larger, relatively speaking. Okay, so let's look at this little section here called Presence. This is where some of the magic happens. Oh, Clarity Slider. This is a really cool thing that is sort of like a local contrast enhancer. It helps bring out details. It's not sharpening. It, it's contrast enhancement, but it's, um, it's not scene-wide. So I'll show you what it does. Let's just uh, take it. Let's drag it to the right. So you see now we have this very contrasty image that's actually lost quite a bit of the color and does not look very real. Um, so that's sort of the extreme, but um, you notice it really does help make it pop a little bit more, gives the image more presence. Uh, when you use it in moderation. So, you know, the vaults around here. Um, and if we drag it up a little bit, just until I think, you know, it looks like it just pops a little bit more, let's say around 30. I think that looks all right. Um, some, that might be too much for some people's tastes, but I think that's okay. Uh, the vibrant slider is exactly what it sounds like. It makes the colors more vivid. I like that slider too. You can't take it too far, of course. Like, that looks ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, when used, again, in moderation, it can really help the image pop a bit more, give it more presence. Um, and we could even warm this up a little bit more. Some people afraid, you know, to, to take their images too far, and certainly you can take them too far to the point where the, the, you know, you look at it and you say, that looks just obviously digitally manipulated. But um, I also do like to make my images pop um, and give them a slightly, slightly more than realistic dose of uh, sort of color and, and flare. Um, but not too far. So, I think by turning up the vibrance here, we really get the feeling that this was at sunset, and bumping up the temperature brings that warmth out. Saturation is another color control, um, but it's a little bit more of a blunt instrument than the vibrant slider, and generally I leave that about where it is, um, just at zero. I don't saturation. So we've already, I think, made the image look a fair bit more interesting. Let's compare it to the original. So Lightroom has a lovely feature where you can just press Y and have this side-by-side -side comparison. And I can click and I can zoom. And we can inspect side-by-side -side portions of the photo. And yes, I think it's looking a lot nicer already. Maybe a little too warm. We'll say there. Um, so that 
that's great. Uh, I think we're done with the basic section, so now let's take a look. Don't care if we won't bother with. Uh, this section is kind of interesting. You can individually um, modify color channels. So let's say I want the sky to be bluer. All I have to do, you can do it with a slider here. I can just turn up blue. Whoa, suddenly so blue. Uh, but that looks bad. But uh, you can also and this is really cool. You can click this little thing right here. And then your cursor turns to this little clicky, draggy thing. And I can click any part of the photo. And I can drag up or I can drag down to enhance or uh, wash out the color underneath the cursor where I clicked. Uh, and I think that's such a cool feature because uh, it really is an intuitive way to uh, change colors. So if I want more of this, like orange, I just jack that up. <laughs> it looks outrageous, but you can do it. It's like the Temple of Cheetos. Um, and you know what? Let's do that a little bit. Let's bring a little bit of that sky out, I think, because we've made the image so warm. Uh, the blue blues are suffering a little bit. just helps the sky pop in contrast against that uh, temple a little bit more. Um, okay, so some of you guys might think this looks awful, but, and to be fair, to be fair, I am colorblind. Uh, I have, I think, protonopia, I'm pretty sure, which is like a issue seeing red. Reds don't show up very strongly to me red tones, so um, I think this looks alright, but you might think it looks horrendous. You can let me know in the comments. Um, okay, let's keep moving down here in detail. Um, so this is where we control our sharpening and our noise reduction. Noise is um, this sort of graininess that you see sometimes. This image doesn't have too much of it, but sometimes you'll see sort of a grainy stippling effect when you zoom right in. Uh, and that's um, the function of the camera sensor, especially in low light situations where it's not receiving enough light. You don't really see the graininess here because um, the structure itself is, is quite rough and, um, and so you don't see um, the graininess inherent in the photo so much. But it's, it's there and it shows up more in some other images, which we'll see, especially dark images. Uh, but I don't think we need to touch it for this particular image because I think it looks pretty good. Sharpening, however, is something that most cameras will do automatically, again, in camera, when they make a JPEG image. Uh, but it is not applied to the raw image. And so uh, I, I do like to sharpen my images in order to... Uh, just make them look a little snappier, sharper. So let's zoom in. We can see the details here. And if I drag this up, say to, uh, oh, I don't know, around 50-ish, um, it's a subtle difference, and it, you may not even be able to see it on YouTube, because YouTube's compression probably obscures a lot of the fine details and the images here. But um, it does help clarify the details without sharpening. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I can undo. And it's a little softer, and then I can redo. Undo, redo. It just helps crisp it up a little bit. Again, you might not be able to tell because of YouTube's compression. but um, So that's a thing. Um, there's a handful of other options here. Let's go into effects. Transform lets you do all kinds of fun stuff. You can like, uh, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you can uh, change the um, perspective. Um, but again, we don't need to do that here. You can do it side to side or, or whatever you want. Get ridiculous, but and sometimes that's really handy if you've taken a picture at a slight angle, but you really want the subject, for instance, a building or something with sharp edges 
is to look square in the frame. You can do that in post, and if it's subtle, you won't notice it. It'll just look more appealing to the eye. Um, okay, so in effects here, there's a handful of things we can do. We can add graininess if you want that effect. I don't. Uh, but one thing I do like, and some of you will probably roll your eyes, but I like to add a bit of a subtle vignetting to some of my photos. I don't know if it's appropriate here. We'll just give it a shot and we'll see. But vignetting is a, a darkening of, at the edges of the photo, especially in the corners. And it's, um, classically, it's an artifact of uh, camera lens distortion and the way they capture light. Um, and in fact, some people, you know, try to remove the vignette effect from their photos, but I think it helps just draw the focus in a little bit and add some drama to the photo. Uh, not a heavy vignette, but let's, let's just see. Well, if we went extreme, you know, we go like that and that gets stupid, obviously. But, um, if we go with something a little more subtle, say like that, and that's actually pretty heavy, but I think it, it just adds a bit more, like I said, drama to the photo. Uh, it adds a gradient to the sky here, which helps make it more interesting. Like if we undo, it's, you know, very flat looking sky, but the vignette helps add that, that interest to the sky. Uh, unfortunately, my brother suffers a little and he just gets uh, darkened up, but I think it makes for a nice effect, so um, I think we'll leave it like so. Uh, so that's just a basic example of my sort of workflow through a photo using some of the, the basic adjustment options and then a few color, uh, sort of specific color adjustments, a little bit of sharpening, maybe some noise reduction in some cases, and occasionally an effect like a vignette. So let's compare that to the original photo, and I think that's a dramatic improvement. Um, we could maybe go back now, now that we've added the vignette, enhanced the contrast, we could bump up the exposure just a little bit. Um, because we've sort of darkened up the photo in some other ways. compensate for some of the, the changes we've made, but when you look at the before and the after, I think it's a dramatic improvement, in my opinion. Um, and it, it is a little bit hyper-real, you know, it, it didn't look exactly like this in real life. The sky probably wasn't quite so blue, you know, the stone maybe wasn't quite so warm with the colors like that, but it's not far off. Again, it's, it's really whatever you're aiming for with the photo, you know. You want to evoke an emotion or a feeling. And uh, I think that just, just bumping it just a little bit beyond realism really helps with that. But I hate it when people really jack out their photos and, you know, have obviously taken the vibrant slider and gone blah, right up to 100, right? Okay. first photo, and like I said, I've got uh, seven of them here. I don't know that we're going to get around to all of them in this video, because I'm talking a lot, and I'm taking the time to step us through all these tools. Uh, but let's just move to the next one anyway. Okay, so this photo, oh, and I guess I should say for anybody who's curious, I'm shooting with a Canon G16, which is just a point-and-shoot camera, fixed lens. Uh, it is pocketable. I carry it in my pocket when I'm traveling, but it's a little chunky uh, for some pockets, probably. Um, but it does have a slightly larger sensor than a lot of point-and-shoot cameras. Um, and it's got a lot of nice manual control features, nice clicky dials and things um, that give you, you know, it has a really good feeling in hand. It's fun to shoot with. Uh, I wanted a um, pocketable camera for travel, so that's why 
I got it, and I think it produces nice images, and obviously it can shoot in RAW. So, um, that's what I use. It's also what I use for my ASMR videos, for what it's worth. Uh, I used to film video, although I will probably be, probably be replacing it for my ASMR stuff in the not-too-distant future. Still, great travel camera. Okay, um, so this photo is a part of a little town called, or village, really, called Rio Maggiore. It is also in Italy. Uh, it is uh, in the Cinque Terre area, um, which is sort of a famous um, coastal region with these gorgeous little villages. Uh, and a really lovely hike that you can do from one village to the next to the next. And uh, Rio Maggiore is the southernmost of the Cinque Terre, the five villages. And um, this is from a hillside overlooking part of Rio Maggiore and facing south. Um, and I kind of like this one because it's, um, I, I wanted to frame some of the coastline with these grapes because there's a lot of vineyards in that area and so I thought this one turned out kind of nicely with these uh, with these defocused grapes in the foreground framing this little slice of of the village and then these beautiful cliffs and the ocean but uh, it's not perfect obviously again straight out of the camera there's some problems it looks a bit flat and dull uh, also our sky is very blown out, um, and we sort of lose our horizon here. Um, so let's see what we can do about that. Um, so this is a good place to get into some of these tone controls. This is uh, the highlights control. It's such a lifesaver. Sometimes, or often, I find my photos end up with blown out highlights. Um, but we can recover a lot of details by just dragging the highlights control down. So in this case, actually, we don't really get that much. Um, but we do gain a little bit of detail back um, on our horizon here. And the sky is not so overwhelmingly bright relative to the rest of the image. Um, so might leave it like that. Also, I'll probably apply a bit of vignetting to this one too, ultimately. And, um, and that will help add a bit more visual interest to the sky there. Uh, but anyway, okay, what else? How's our exposure? Overall, I think it's okay. Um, I think what we really want, again, is we want to come down here to the presence. And, uh, I sort of rely on these maybe as a bit of a crutch, but they really do improve the um, visual impact of a photo with just a couple of clicks. So we could really use some more vibrance, I think, here. Uh, although we have to be careful because our grapes are going to get crazy. <laughs> crazy grapes, if we're not careful. I also think it's too cool. Um, Italy is a, such a warm, sunny country. So I really like to make my photos from there uh, on the warm side of things. Yeah, because I think it's a sort of a, a nice visual presentation and I think it's a little more true to life. Okay, so um, what else can we do here? Well, uh, we do have this global contrast slider, which might help us a bit here but you can't easily take it too far. I mean, that looks ridiculous. Um, but a little bit more because this was sh shot from a distance and so we lose a lot of our color and contrast in our, uh, thanks to the just the sort of haze in the distance. So we can bump that up a little bit just to give a bit more. Um, and we could even increase the vibrance a bit to get a bit more out of those distant greens. Um, we can use our HSL settings here, which stands for Hue Saturation Luminance, um, to pull some of the color out of our grapes. Because
areas, I think they're just a bit too yellowy. It doesn't take too much necessarily. And then, um, okay, let's bump on down here in detail, sharpen up some of this distant stuff a little bit. We'll just send that to 50. I find that's usually an okay spot. You can see more of the graininess in the distance here. Some people don't like that noise, that graininess. I think it looks kind of alright. Uh, it's generally preferable to having it look smeary and um, and uh, sort of on low detail. So when you zoom out, you don't really see it either. So we've sharpened up the details a bit, and let's uh, let's again. I'm gonna go back to the vignette because I really think it helps, especially in cases where you have just a big blank sky there, and it'll help, it'll darken up the corner of our grapes here and help frame that image again. So that's too much, I'd say. Maybe about there. So it does make our shadows down here quite dark, but I don't think that's a problem. Adds a little bit of a gradient to the sky, not much, but a bit. That's without, that's with, without, with. And again, just adds that drama I'd say. Uh, and I think this is starting to look pretty good, actually. Maybe we can give it a little bit more, a little bit more on these guys. Uh, maybe it's overdoing it. Yeah, uh, the clarity is a tough one. You can, you can overdo it pretty easily, I would say. Um, there are things we can do here to look at sort of whether we're clipping colors or clipping tones at any point, losing detail basically. If I press J, you see how we get a few pixels highlighted down here. And what's that, what that's showing me is that those colors have been crushed to absolute black. Um, so there's potentially a little bit of detail lost here, but I don't care about detail in the shadow of the grapes anyway. And the same thing will highlight, or the same thing will happen if uh, my details are blown out and I'm losing details at the extreme white end of the scale. Oops, bump my mic. Um, but that's not the case here, clearly. So, um, I think we'll leave this photo for now. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know if I'm totally thrilled with it, but I think it's nice anyway. You know, maybe what we could do is we can once again we can go to our HSL controls and we can look at the ocean here because I think a little bit more blue in the ocean would be really nice. And really, it's not blue in just the ocean. It does increase blue across the whole image, but um, uh, it's hard to say. Let's, I mean, that's too much. But I think right around there, is kind of nice. We get a bit more blue in our ocean. We do see a bit more of the, the haze, the blue haze that you get in the distance, but I think that's okay. All right, let's move on here. We're uh, taking our sweet time. Okay, so um, I was trying to select a variety of sort of interesting photos that are a little bit exotic from neat places that would feel like a bit of a, a vacation for you, you know, or uh, in the doldrums of January. I mean, it's just, at least in the northern hemisphere, it can often be pretty um, bland at this time of year, I guess. So we've got our nice warm images here. Now we've come to the mountains. This photo was taken in the Italian Alps, uh, not very far from the Swiss and French borders, actually. This is a national park called Grand Paradiso National Park. And um, this is a hike that we did there. I can't remember the name of the hike, but this was uh, just a beautiful valley that we hiked through. And um, it's not too very distant from uh, the Matterhorn, actually, on the border of Italy and Switzerland. And so we've got this 
lovely mountain with these patches of snow and we can see here that the snow the snow is definitely a bit blown out looking uh, like just a bit too bright so let's go back up to our our highlights here let's bring them down and as we do you can actually see we have recovered all this detail in the sky these clouds um, I've brought this all the way down um, which maybe is a bit extreme, but it's, uh, it's the only way to get that detail back in the sky. So I think we'll do that. Um, bringing up the clarity will help here. Uh, bringing out some of the landscape details, and there's a lot of detail in this landscape. And so I think we can make good use of the clarity slider here. Uh, again, you can't abuse it. I think that's too much, but um, I think like around maybe there, I think that looks really nice. Um, we can bring out the vibrance a bit, although this is, is not super necessary here because there's not a lot of color in this photo to begin with, but it does help make the greens a bit more vivid in the foreground. Um, Let's look at what uh, sharpening again. So this is just kind of my workflow. You know, I just, there's certain things that I know I want uh, to change about an image. Um, and the sharpening will definitely help bring out the details in this image. And I will probably fall back on my vignetting again because a, it helps with the consistency from image to image. B, uh, I just think it looks just nice. It just adds a bit of that drama. So that just adds something more to the sky. It helps bring out the details in the sky a bit more. Our image is now kind of dark overall, so we can bump up our, our exposure a few notches. Um, but I tend to like to have my images on the slightly the darker side because I just, I hate losing details in the blown out whites. You can see we've recovered details here in our snow that was not visible before. Um, and I just think that looks really nice, actually. I'm really happy with how that image turned out. We could warm it up a little bit. It's, um, it's a colder location, but again, if we want some consistency uh, amongst our images. It's good to keep the color cast somewhat similar, uh, unless you really want to emphasize uh, the fact that it is sort of a different place or that the colors are different. So there's the before and after comparison. You can see how much more of the detail just pops in our edited image that detail in the sky that's really not visible or barely visible in the unedited photo. Detail in the snow that just gets blown out over here. Um, and then the colors are just more vivid. The greens are, are, uh, are much bolder. Some nice flowers down here. This was such a beautiful hike. Was one of my favorite parts of the trip. The Alps are just beautiful. Um, you know, all parts of them. I've, I've visited the Italian Alps, the Swiss Alps, and the Austrian Alps, and they're just so lovely. Okay, that was quick and easy. I think it looks really nice, in my humble opinion. Okay, so this is not Italy anymore. This is Hawaii. This is specifically the island of Maui and a valley called the, uh, I believe it's pronounced Iao, I-A-O Valley, Iao, um, which was a sacred valley to the native Hawaiians, or is to this day, probably. Um, and uh, you can go up there as a tourist. There's sort of a little gardens area, and uh, there's some places you can sort of hike as well. And this was taken there in sort of a, it's a, a lush uh, sort of jungle area at elevation. It's ringed by um, these cliffs and these sort of peaks all the way around. I think it's the interior of an old cinder cone in a volcano complex uh, or something like that anyway. Well, really, the, all the islands there are volcanoes, but there were at one point. Um, 
this though simply because this is getting quite long and um, I kind of want to work with this one more so this is also from Maui and I visited Maui in uh, spring of 2016 and um, I want to work on this one because I think it has a lot of potential but it needs some work so the first thing that I notice here well two things one I've got a power line I snapped this photo from a moving car so I was doing the best I could um, two the horizon is not straight so both of these problems are easily fixed but let's do one at a time let's focus on the horizon uh, Lightroom has this wonderful automatic straightening option which will look for straight lines and it does a great job look at that so uh, it is straightened our horizon here automatically already this photo looks better let's look at our uh, our power line here now we could crop the photo to remove that but we do have another option and that is our spot removal tool um, and so what I can do is I can just click the area and it's trying to it's trying to replace the power line with more power line but what I can do is I can take this and drag it around and this might look a little janky I don't know we'll just have to see but I can replace that spot with content from elsewhere in the image so let's try that and we're just going to basically do a chain of spot removals here and you know it's going to look a little weird um, I'm just trying to find sort of pieces of the cloud that are nice and consistent looking um, it's going to look not perfect that's for sure I think it's it's good enough that no one's going to notice um, unless I told them you guys will notice um, you'll probably notice well obviously you will because we're looking at it right now but uh, if you didn't know that I had done that if you were just looking at this image you would have no idea probably and you know we can move these things around a little bit to try and get better coverage that slight blurring pattern that you see there but like I think it looks pretty good personally oops it certainly looks good enough uh, you could do a better job with Photoshop of course but for a quick fix it just gets rid of that unsightly line uh, okay so we straightened our image we kind of fudged out our power line up there there are other options I should say here uh, you know you can increase the size of these circles um, you know like that and actually maybe that's part of the solution that does kind of work doesn't it yeah that maybe does even a better job okay um, colors again Hawaii is a very warm place so we can probably bring the warmth up a bit sort of safely and that looks nice um, I also think we can bring the exposure up a fair amount not that much but um, Hawaii is a very bright place and I think this image was underexposed let's press J and then we'll see if we're starting to get some clipping I mean really we don't get clipping for, for quite a while until things get ridiculous there uh, but I think around there looks pretty nice okay let's do our usual clarity and vibrance vibrance I think will really help here Hawaii is a colorful place how about that uh, I think that's starting to look sky and in the ocean I think that looks really 
Okay, so let's go back to our HSL controls. And let's just pull up that sky a bit. Just a bit more blue. That's pretty good. Um, so now we do our. Uh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. But that's okay. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, we come in here. Let's uh, improve these details. In fact, I would like to brighten this up a little bit without brightening the rest of the image. Uh, we can go up here to our shadows, and you see we can totally alter just those darker areas by manipulating this slider. So uh, let's just bring them out just a bit. Um, it can look really fake if you overdo it, like anything here, but that I think looks okay. Let's compare. So loads better. Looks like we've taken a grimy film off the photo. We straightened it, we got rid of this gross line, and it looks like a beautiful sunny day like it should gorgeous blue skies and water. I'm not going to vignette this one. I don't think it needs it. Um, there's enough going on that it just, it looks great without it. Um, but what I will do is I will sharpen it. And that just brings a bit more out there in the foliage, for instance. So, um, I think that looks quite lovely. It's not too bad for a photo shot from the window of a moving car um, that had a nasty power line and uh, it wasn't very straight. I think that looks pretty good. Doesn't it look like you just want to lay down on that beach and listen to the surf rolling in and out, hang out under that palm tree maybe with a good book and a nice drink. Um, this was taken on the east side of the island, um, on the road south of Hannah, going around the, um, the back side of, of Haleakala Volcano. The road gets kind of rough through some of that area, but uh, it is beautiful, really beautiful. I guess quite narrow, too. You can see some crashing waves here. Yeah, I'm happy with how this turned out. Okay. All right, so what a dramatic shot, huh? Beautiful sunset. This was shot from the west side of Maui uh, in a resort area called Kanapali. And uh, I was sitting on a, on a balcony um, eating a nice dinner. The sun was setting. It was really lovely. Um, and so first things first. Let's straighten this out. It's not too bad, but I don't think it's quite straight. Let's see if the auto option will do it. Yeah, so it did. It figured it out. The auto option works well anytime there's a horizon line like this. Um, what else can we do with this image? Honestly, it looks really nice as it is, but we can take the colors a little further. We can warm it up a little more. Um, I don't know that it needs too much more clarity, but increasing the clarity a bit does help uh, bring out these crepuscular rays, these sun shafts, or god rays if you want to call them that, uh, a little bit more. Vibrance, yeah, let's do a bit of that. Again, it's already a very colorful image, but uh, we can really just make it shine with a bit more. Um, I don't care too much about pulling detail out of this water because it's not really the focal point of the image. If we wanted to, we could take our shadows and bring them up, but I don't think that really actually helps the image. Maybe slightly, you know, just like a little bit, but uh, just so the water doesn't look too dark, but I do think this is an image uh, that could benefit from a bit of vignetting. Although, I mean, it's already very bright towards the center. Maybe we don't need that. No, no, you know what? I don't think we do. Um, 
gosh, I don't quite know what to do with this image, honestly. I picked it because it was just striking. I thought it looked really nice, but... Um, I mean, we can do a bit of sharpening just to sharpen up some of these details in the sky, but yeah, the image is actually quite soft uh, to begin with, and it's a little bit noisy, actually. You can see some of the grain. Um, and there's not a whole lot of detail that needs to be sharpened up here, so let's... Let's just do a more conservative sharpen on that. And the challenge with sharpening is that you also end up sharpening your noise, your graininess, uh, which you can compensate for a little bit with just a, a tiny bit of uh, noise removal. I don't know if you can see, but that it did help remove a bit of the grain. Anyway, um, you know, there's a bit more color there, and that's really, I mean, we can just go overboard on the warmth, but maybe somewhere around there. I think that's really all it needed. Um, I just love a lot about this image, but now the sun, yes. Okay, so the sun is quite blown out, and, uh, we could stick our highlight tool here, and we can bring that down just to the point where it's not uh, clipping. Right about there, I'd say. Uh, so we're not losing any of our detail. I think that's pretty lovely. Okay. Last image different yet again. This is an image of New York City, Manhattan, uh, taken from um, the top of the Empire State Building. Um, it's dusk, the sun is just set behind these sort of storm clouds that were rolling in. Uh, I took this photo in October of last year, October 2016. Uh, and I think it's really nice, but I think it could definitely use some work, and I think it might be our most challenging photo yet, uh, because low-light photos tend to be tricky. I zoom in here, and you can immediately see, look at all this noise, all this grainy, grimy loss of detail. This is where point-and-shoot cameras like my G16 uh, fall down, because even though it does have a slightly larger sensor than your average point-and-shoot, it's still way, way, way smaller than a, a true DSLR. Uh, it's nowhere close to a full frame. It's not close to an APS-C type sensor or even a micro four thirds. It's much smaller than that. And what that means is that it can, there are fewer photons that can hit the actual uh, silicone, the sensor itself. And that means it struggles in low light conditions because it actually receives less information, less light than a larger sensor. And you pay, of course, for a larger sensor. You pay more. Um, so anyway, low light conditions like this are somewhere that my camera does struggle quite a bit. Um, but we can do some work here in post and we can maybe recover some detail or at least uh, help deal with some of this grainy griminess. So first of all, let's dial in our uh, our exposure here. I think we can bring it down uh, because it was evening. Uh, and I think that maybe reflects a little more closely what it actually looked like. I don't think we need to touch our highlights. Um, we can probably bump our contrast a bit. What One thing I will probably do and one way to get rid of some of this grossness is to drop our black levels so that a lot of that noise disappears into the, the deeper blacks as opposed to sort of a grainy gray. Uh, I think that already has helped a little bit. Although we have lost some of our details here, maybe that's too heavy handed. Let's. Uh, black levels and uh, lowering the exposure, maybe we might have lost. 
lost a little too much there. Um, and this is a situation where there maybe is no perfect solution, but I'm actually curious here. The Lightroom has an auto button, but we'll try and sort of intelligently optimize the uh, dynamic range of the photo in terms of, uh, you know, brightness. Why don't we just hit it and see what it does? Okay, so that brightens it way up. And that shouldn't surprise me, um, because, of course, Lightroom has no idea that I was taking this photo at night, so, you know, it's just, uh, it's just trying to maximize the dynamic range across the photo, but it, it's not realistic in this scenario. Okay, so a bit of clarity. Let's just bump the vibrance. I think that looks pretty nice in this scenario, getting a bit more vibrant. Uh, that will result in more graininess, though, more noise as we jack the colors. Uh, we could probably warm it a bit. Not too much, but if we warm it up, we get some of those nice colors in the sky coming out a bit more. Okay, now uh, let's use some noise reduction. This is going to be a balancing act. There might be a better way to do this, but... Uh, I think we want luminance noise reduction. So let's say there. Okay, now it's a pretty dramatic effect. If you watch, let's undo. Noise, noise, noise. Redo. Much better. Not perfect, but much better. However, the rest of the image does look quite a bit softer too. So how can we uh, fix that while well, we can ramp up our sharpening? become sort of a battle between these two effects. You want the image to look reasonably sharp, but you also don't want it to look gritty and grimy. And I don't know that there's a perfect solution here. Uh, there's only so much we can do about our cityscape here. But, I mean, look how much better it is, just right off the bat. Yeah, we've lost a bit of detail by darkening up our noisy areas, but... I think the visual impact remains because you still get all these twinkling lights and uh, it's just so much better than this gray and grainy washed out garbage uh, that comes straight out of the camera. Um, I don't think this needs any vignetting. Um, I th you know, we could, but I don't think it needs it. Um, we could ramp up a little bit more on the vibrance because I love that sky. It just looks so nice. And, uh, and we could go a little heavier on our noise reduction, but I think it's okay. I think when we do this, I mean, we could bump it a little more, but noise reduction really can get very heavy handed very quickly. No, I think we're good. I think at this scale and resolution when you're not zoomed in. I think that looks fine. So, the before and the after. Maybe we can bump up our exposure a little more. Let's say there. I think that's pretty nice, personally. I think that's uh, a decent treatment to that photo. There's probably been some of you who are like photo editing pros or like actual professional photographers who have been just face bombing this whole time or like shaking your head like, oh, what a noob. But like I said, uh, I am just an amateur photographer. I just like to take pictures when I travel. I like to capture memories of my trips and, uh, and then I like to bring those home and then sort of work on them over time, bit by bit. It's a nice way to remember and sort of relive those adventures uh, a little bit at a time and remind me of, of good times uh, that I've had. Um, and so that's really all I do it for. It's, you know, it's for myself and, and for friends and family to see these things. Um, 
it's full screen or 1080p, you know, on YouTube. Again, YouTube's compression will probably uh, wreck them a little bit, but if you do want to see the photos in their full screen glory, you can go check it out at the very end here, just after I'm done. All right. Thank you so much for watching today. I do hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you learned a couple of basic features of Lightroom. It is a great piece of software, and I think 10 bucks a month for this and Photoshop is, is pretty darn reasonable, actually. Um, anyway, thanks again, and I look forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now.